My name's Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Hi, guys. I'm Sam Fricker. I'm an Australian Olympic diver, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Madison Smith, actor, coming at you from all the way up in Canada. Tune into my live interview with acclaimed radio personality Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Head on over to our in our no well, not our app wait a minute we got to go to our website <laughs> and click on power 985.com before we jump ahead of the gun and head on over to instagrams and everything else even though you can you can click the hoobie link on steven coco or the direct.me on the power 98.5 radio instagram page to tune in live but it's going to be a lot easier if you go to power 985.com or you can download the iOS or Android app or tune in on Alexa by adding the power 98.5 satellite radio in your Alexa skill. However, the reason why I'm saying go on the app or go on the website is because we want you to click the bottom right hand icon. It's kind of like a magenta or pinkish. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna send in your comments, your love, your support. The reason why is we have Madison Smith with us today. He's an extraordinary uh, and, and most incredible and recognized actor. And most, most people may not know this, but we've got several projects that we're gonna be talking about that Madison you know, is in, a Christmas movie coming up, um, you know, from a young age, Madison always wanted to be an actor. However, uh, he instead would go on to attend college um, on a baseball scholarship and pursue a career in marketing. After attending a year of school, though, he couldn't shake the feeling he was on the wrong path. So Madison followed his acting dreams, packed his bags and made the move to Vancouver and enrolled in Vancouver Academy of Dramatic Arts. Uh, this is why, after graduating from the Academy in 2011, Madison quickly began booking roles and has since appeared in Netflix, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, The CW Supergirl, Supernatural, Legends of Tomorrow, and Riverdale, and Sci-Fi's Aftermath. Can you believe it? Because I'm not surprised. And I believe we've also got two new projects coming up. Um, we're, I, I don't want to hit those just yet. We're going to talk about those with Madison um, live here on Live On Air with Stephen Cook on Power 98.5. Once again, head on over to power985.com and share your love, your support. If you have any questions for Madison um, or any you know comments and, and thoughts about past guests, uh, we will be also interviewing uh, actress Erica Hubbard on November 2nd at 11 a.m. Pacific. We've got Mike Manning again. Uh, it's been a year since I've had him on. Uh, all of you know him. That's going to be on November 3rd at 10 a.m. Pacific. We've got Jason Marshall. He's a music artist. That's on November 5th at 2 p.m. Pacific. And then Jay Litherland. November 4th at 11. Once again, you can go to Power 98.5, Power 98, Power985.com and check out our schedule on there. We're going to have all the latest and greatest, not only just live on there with Stephen Cuoco, but also Catherine and Company with Catherine Swain and Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni. 
Without any more wait or waiting, Mr. Madison Smith, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am too. Like we're both in the same time zone. I'm feeling your energy. Uh, I was getting my coffee <laughs> before we we got everything settled in, and I'm really liking this. I'm 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 loving how. Uh, you know, most of the time, and as you know, when most interviews happen, like everyone's somewhere else. I mean, I even interview people all the way out where my team's at in the UK, and they're an eight-hour difference from us. So um, it is quite uh, quite special to be here with you in the same hour. Oh, absolutely. Every time I do an interview, it feels like a math exam. I feel like I have to go add three minus three plus the time zone <laughs> plus the time shift. Is it March? Is it April? I don't know anymore. It is uh, so nice to be on the same time zone. So uh, already this is one of my favorite interviews. Oh, I appreciate that. And and it's going to continue to be your favorite interview. The reason why is because, as you know, unlike anywhere else, we don't do scripted media. It is very much unscripted, uh, like television here. Um, I'm going to say, like, maybe I could be, if not the first, maybe within a top five uh, radio producers and, and, and talent as a media radio host to be the – the first and only possibly um, unscripted media platform, radio station, and radio show. And that's always exciting. I mean, that's so exciting because, like, I think you get to know somebody so much better when there's nothing that you have to, like, no points you have to hit. It's just, let's chat. Mm-hmm. Speaking of chatting, meeting Mr. Christmas, that's coming up. Tell us more about that. Um, well, it definitely starts Christmas off early because uh, November 1st, tomorrow, is when it officially airs on Chicken Soup for the Soul. So uh, I definitely think once you are hung over from your Halloween plans <laughs> and are looking for something to do on the first day of November, it's a good way to start with uh, with Christmas. It's, uh, it's a project that's quite special to me. I uh, actually got to film it in my hometown. of uh, It's called Prince George, British Columbia. I grew up there and sort of played my, my sports there, hockey, baseball, sort of all year round. Um, after I moved away to pursue acting, I always really wanted to go back and, and film a movie. And, and I think that was a, it was a milestone I always really wanted to hit of like, I want to film a movie in my hometown. And 10 years into my career, I hit that milestone. It was super exciting. So it started off already a great project for me just based on like the nostalgia factor but then put that together with all the amazing things that came of it i got to work with a fantastic lead actress her name was greta Carew johns and uh, i think you should just be prepared to see her everywhere it was uh the first time working or not it, it was not only my first time but it was uh laura mitchell our writer director her first time directing and writing um, and I had seen her around. She's known for uh, some pretty big roles on Lifetime, Hallmark, things like that. But this is her first time behind the director's chair. And, oh, man, again, like I got so lucky because I just believe that everybody's going to see her movies someday on, on the big screen. She has an amazing eye for this. She's clearly on the right path for, for being a director. So, again, Day one, I knew I was lucky. And then by the time we finished, I just thought we had made a really fun little story. And and Christmas movies, as as I love them, I always think that like they have a really special place in, in my heart. They have a special place for a lot of people because everybody wants to feel good at Christmas. And it's it takes you on a little bit of a journey. It takes you on some highs and lows. And, and the will they won't they is of the lead and the and um, like the female lead and the male lead, but at the same time, it, it just like, it ends happy and you feel good after you watch it. You feel in the Christmas spirit. Do you believe Madison that where we are at in a world and it's not uncommon Christmas movies debuting a month, two months before Christmas. Um, and also it goes well because Thanksgiving is going to be in three weeks, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, for marketing and, and PR and advertising perspective, it's actually a smart move to come out with something as, as a, you know, at the level of film and filmmaking and, and movie, um, you know, the type of style that you do and what you're a part of, it just makes sense. Um, I really don't think it is 
too, too early for that. For what it's worth in having a, a huge honor to interview you before uh, the release and premiere of Meeting Mr. Christmas, um, are you happy with the time period of this coming out? And do you feel that it just works well only because people are just so excited and quick and inspired to take a break now more than ever before and to really say, I'm going to take a pause. Let's see what's on this channel. Let's see what's on this network. Do you think it just works for where we're at now? I think it works for where you're at. And I think one of the really cool things is the way the media industry is growing is it's not everything for everybody anymore, which is so exciting when it comes to being an actor and being in the film industry, because you can make something for some people. You can make something that's going to hit this audience. You can make something that's going to hit this audience. Like 10, 20 years ago, if you were making a movie, it had to do well for everybody. It had to hit all the points. It, it had to um, be mass marketed so that every single person in every home would want to see that or else it was doomed to fail. And now, I mean, there are people that love Christmas in July and they love Christmas to start as soon as November hits. And that's who like this movie coming out on November 4th is for, or first is for, which means that that person who that family who already has their tree up and wants to start, you know, a whole uh, two months early, they're good to go. And, and that's the best part. It, it just, it doesn't have to be for everybody. But if someone's excited to start Christmas on November 1st, that's what we're here for. And I'll say this as well, a little bit of like, a, I'm pretty proud of this. Sometimes it's nice to be first. If you're the first Christmas movie people watch, people might get a little bit of uh, Christmas movie fatigue, but they watch ours first because it came out first. Well, maybe that'll be one of the only five they watched this year. So I feel uh, uh, a little bit uh, happy about that, actually. <laughs> Meeting Mr. Christmas is a Canadian romantic drama in which a cynical online travel blogger finds her dis disdain for the festive period challenged when she meets a Christmas-loving doctor in her, in her old hometown. Um, that sounds more than just a Christmas film. It's kind of got like a, a, I don't, I know it's on a different network, but almost like a lifetime Netflix type of feel to it. Absolutely. It, it, um, it doesn't have any of the, it was made independently. So when Laura Roden, uh, was directing it, she found independent uh, filmmakers who wanted to make her story. So it wasn't made, uh, with a network in mind. It was made and then, uh, uh, sold for distribution. So that was the really exciting part. We knew the vibe that we were going for. We were, um, we had all, you know, everybody that was on the set had worked in some capacity on some sort of Christmas movie before, but we got to really make it our own. We got to make sure that um, uh, it felt like us and that we didn't have um, the, the overseers sort of uh, pushing us in any direction. We got to make the movie we wanted to make and, you're totally right. It, it doesn't exactly feel straight up like a um, like a Christmas movie. The the funny thing is, is my character is uh, she kind of gives him this uh, in a way she kind of means it as a dig. But she calls me Mr. Christmas because my character, he he loves Christmas. But the the guy that he is, is he loves Christmas, not because of you know, Jingle Bells and Santa Claus. He loves Christmas because of the way it makes people feel. He is a doctor who works in the pediatric um, uh, pediatric wing at the hospital. And when you're in pediatrics, I, mean, I did a little bit of research on doctors, uh, especially doctors in pediatrics. So they, their mood is, is basically dictated by the kids that they're helping and how they're doing. And it, it just is one of those things that gives him the warm fuzzies when he sees how happy the kids are on Christmas. It's, it's all of them are, are just glowing at that time. And, and he loves seeing that. He loves seeing the, the people wanting to help the hometown getting together for, you know, some sort of outdoor Christmas market thing there. He loves Christmas tree shopping just to be outside. Like he loves Christmas, but it's for the reasons of connection, not for the reasons of Christmas, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense because that's exactly 
where most people are at in today's age from what we've experienced in the last several years, as you know, Madison, is it is all about connection. So what's really remarkable is we're going to be able to watch a film, if not a film for the first time for the season, that is all about connection, relationships, communication, transparency, and really the opportunity to decide for yourself and take full responsibility. How do you want to live your life? How do you want to encompass yourself and and the type of life you want to live? That is what I hear. That is what I see. And that's how I'm interpreting this Christmas movie, first of the season, um, Mm -hmm. that I'm sure has been touched on in other points, but has never been most powerful than now with meeting Mr. Christmas. Absolutely. And it's, it's one of those ones where I think we call, you know, Christmas is more of a placeholder. It's, it's the holiday spirit is what it, it more so encompasses. It's not about it being a a Christmas movie. Yes. Christmas is the, um, is the holiday that we are specifically celebrating, but it is the, the feeling you get around that time of year, whatever you celebrate at that time, because it, it's, it is one thing that, that transcends it. It feels like Christmas has become a thing that is for everybody now. And in a way that it's, it's not, it means the holiday. It doesn't mean the, the celebration of, of what only Christmas is. It's for everybody we feel. And, and that was, I think what we wanted to touch on the most was this guy loves this time of year more than anything because of everybody being in a good mood, everybody have a smile on their face, everybody being cold, but also being content, everybody getting a, a hot drink together and, and uh, sharing a, a hot cider on a cold day, letting the steam come up, but like it warms your fingers. It is, it is a great time of year. So being a part of that is really cool. And I think fun for us actors, especially actors here in, in Vancouver, we, uh, we film Christmas movies all year. Like we, so it's, it's kind of a weird thing to be on the outside of, uh, or I guess be on the inside of the industry looking out because when you say, is it weird to have Christmas so early in the year? But when you're an actor, Christmas is 365 days a year because we filmed this movie in February. I auditioned in January. There was, I think, I auditioned for four or five other Christmas movies, each one taking place in a different time of year. One was going to take place in June. One was a a summer Christmas movie. Uh, There was a bunch that are coming out in the next two months that filmed in like the September, October time. So it is hilarious to think that, um, yes, Christmas comes out two, or our our movie comes out two months before Christmas, but I've been celebrating Christmas for 365 days. And and I don't know if that's going to stop anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it shouldn't. And, you know, as it's been said to most, um, every day is a weekend. So why mm-hmm. Monday blues exist is only because people believe that should be. But if you treat Monday as a Friday or a weekend, as you do, you know, every day is Christmas, you know, for you and to you, um, it makes a world of a difference. And it really is power of the mind and what you think. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's a, it's a good, it's a good time to be, uh, be an actor on a Christmas movie. They always are fun. They always feel cool. And sometimes it's just like really cool to make when it's summertime, make it look like winter. But I've, I've been in one. I did one about five years ago or maybe a little longer, but it was called four Christmases and a wedding. And we were during a heat wave in Vancouver in August and so much of a heat wave that it was a forest fire season. And the air, there was an air quality warning for how smoky the air was. But when we were filming the movie, it just looked like it was like a wintertime fog. Mm -hmm. So all of us are bundled up in these thick, you know, down jackets, sweating so much, trying to pretend like we're cold. (laughs) Like our only little bit of sanctuary was going inside the building that had air conditioning. And we would like take off our winter jackets and lay on like the cold cement floor just to get a little bit chilly. It was uh, it's quite a funny little thing to make Christmas movie in summer. Well, I've got to add to this when we think about warmth and love and cheer and friendships, Marcos Papadatos, our mutual friend just sent us a message. Mm-hmm. 
Send him my warm regards and love. He's my favorite. Ah, oh, what a guy. <laughs> what a guy. I mean, that's just, that just, that warms your heart too right there. I mean, it's so exciting. I love this industry because I get to meet so many amazing people. And like, it's, it's a cool industry too, because you get to be fast friends. I, I think you're, when you're not working a job that has the same people over and over because it, it changes so quickly. I mean, most of the movies that I make take place over the course of like three weeks. Mm -hmm. So you become fast friends and you become fast family, but then they're kind of out of your life um, uh, pretty quickly. But the best part is that like, I love the fact that meeting people through this, I get to know so many good people. I get to meet so many fantastic people rather than just, Knowing that I work with some good people, but my my hand has five good friends. I make five new good friends every week, and it is uh, very cool. I'm extraordinarily excited and happy that I'm amongst those friends, even though you have not mentioned my name, but I'm going to include my name. <laughs> it's one of those things that I, it feels a little pandery. If I was to all of a sudden be like, you're my best friend, like now all of a sudden I'm pandering to you yeah. just so you give me a good interview. I don't want to do that. You know, I want to. I want to tell you you're my friend afterwards so it doesn't feel like I needed something. You know, I that's, like that's, that. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> I like that. But you know what? You and I, what's very amazing with this, and I'm glad you brought up these points, Madison, is even with the connection with today and even when we first spoke when we were talking about, you know, you coming on live and, you know, what it would be about and, and having just a base or an idea of, you know, for conversation, you know, in an unscripted way. And I really felt the connection with you as I still do now. And, um, you know, even in your, your happiness of, of this experience and moment of, you know, hey, you know, one of the rarest times, you know, you'd be able to be interviewed and be a guest, you know, live on a show and, you know, where you don't have to wake up we early in the morning. It's, this is an experience we're going to have for a long time. And you're going to remember, yeah, Steven's that guy where I was able to sleep in that day. <laughs> it was great. I, I, I usually have to um, be very mindful of the clock the night before. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I fall asleep now, I'll get three hours of sleep. But if I stay awake for another five minutes, should I just stay up for the next three hours and then sleep after the interview? I don't know. So it is. Uh, it was very nice to not have to watch the clock. So that was a, that was a huge benefit. Um, I'm extremely happy for you, honestly. And for those that are tuning in, I want to thank everyone, including Marcos. Thank you for the message. I love when people uh, use those messages to help share what's going on in the world. We have actor Madison Smith. He's based out of Canada. We are talking about his latest, which is going to be, I would be thinking, an award-winning um, new hit movie, Meeting Mr. Christmas. We're going to play the trailer. Uh, Madison just gave us a lot of great points about Meeting Mr. Christmas. It is debuting tomorrow. We're going to go over all the information again. Um, you know, what net, uh, it's not a network. It's a streaming app it's going to be on, right? Correct. Yeah. Chicken soup for the soul, which I was really excited. It's through crackle crackle. Um, like the streaming app crackle has obviously their own sort of like subsidies and chicken soup for the soul is one of them. So that's what it's going to be seen on, uh, November 1st. Small. Do you have a time and, uh, what time zone? My guess is because it's streaming. It's one of those things similar where it kind of pops on at midnight. And okay. that is all the information I have there, unfortunately. that It didn't say any time when I found the information online. So it is one of those things. I think it just pops on, on streaming probably at midnight. And it's not going to be uh, difficult because, you know, chicken, chicken soup for the soul is very well known. And for the fact of it is, is that um, it, it's, it's going to be watched. You know, no mm -hmm. matter what, people are going to hear about it. They're going to find out about it. This is not going to be a movie that's going to be hidden where you just don't know. And once again, you know, we continue, you know, to support one another, which, you know, I hope media, which is so needed right now. Um, I myself, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm not only a representative in the world of public relations, but, you know, I'm also talent as well. So I understand your mm -hmm. position. But, you know, I sent out. Uh, for my uh, uh, Olympian client uh, today, a bunch of, you know, uh, press, you know, tips and news tips and things like that. Four of them came back offering uh, 
marketing packages, I'm thinking to myself, this is not how media is supposed to be. You know, <laughs> I think paid media is perfect for politicians. And I'm not, you know, joking about that. It is perfect for mm. people like them. But for people like you and athletes and musicians, the, the real responsibility should be is here is a story. Why are you bouncing back four times just in one day? And it happens more often than not. Even very, very well-established media platforms, Madison, will bounce back mm -hmm. a suggestion for a paid marketing package. And I'm like, we're not looking for marketing. Here is someone who won, broke 10 American world records. He was just honored and awarded by the UN out of over 5,600 people in 190 countries as for being 26 years old teaching people how to swim to help prevent drowning. Gold is 1 million people and you know, plus. And just like yourself, you've got this incredible movie, and I'm going to go into this. Not only that, you were nominated in 2022 for the Leo Awards, 2021 for the Leo Awards. You won in 2021 uh, for two WebFest. In 2020, you won Canadian cinematography awards and the list goes on and on and on and media i don't care who it is you guys deserve as many moments like what you're having today madison because mm -hmm. we're talking about your life we're talking about people's jobs and we're talking about a, a life and livelihood that should have no bearing or thought that this would ever be part of marketing or advertising we're talking about once again a film people's lives inspiration a story but also something that it gives people the gift to help enhance and elevate their life this is not a product we're talking about people we're talking about so much more like what you were sharing earlier madison relationships and so i just want to let that be known and on record i will continue to browbeat it that the main mm -hmm responsibility of media and journalism is to the public not to advertisers sponsors and investors and i think that's one of those funny things too it's like i think the audiences and and human beings in general they're smart they they there's the um you know the the phrase they say it's like the uncanny valley where you like Something is like CGI, but you can tell it just doesn't look like a real human face. So it feels a little weird. It can be the best CGI, but there's that one little thing. They call it the uncanny valley. And I think humans not only can see that in a CGI movie, but they can also feel it when they're being fed something that's, you know, faux marketing. I mean, I think that's why the the world of just like, you know, go out there and and, and make good stuff so people want it. Yeah, you know what? If if it's it's important to tell people about certain things, but tell them because you're proud, not because you have to, or those kind of I I love that part of um of doing these things because it's it's something that, you know, the this industry is something I got into to be my only job, but early on, I mean I was, you know, serving food to people I don't know at a restaurant and I would work five days a week. And I would sometimes get two days on a show and those are my two days off. And I still consider those days off of work, but I was working on those days. If I can consider the job I want to do and do now as a day off in my past, I can still consider it that now. And it's, it's just such a fun thing to be a part of. I, I love the fact that it's something I get paid to do. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm not getting paid, uh, uh, uh boatloads of Scrooge McDuck money, but <laughs> I, I get paid to do it. It's great to, to be able to pay some bills with, with what I love to do, mm -hmm. but it was, uh, it's something that I love to do and I'm happy to get paid for and not the other way around. I'm not being paid to do something that I'm good at. It's a weird little like tangent, but when I was a kid, I used to get a subscription to a magazine called Sports Illustrated for Kids. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who used to get that same magazine. And they used to have a fold-out poster you could put on your wall every year or, or every month. And it would ask the same questions to each athlete. And I was always so excited to see. And it was something that threw me off. Every time I would see an athlete who told the, uh, the 
um, author or told the audiences, it would say, what's your favorite sport? If they said their favorite sport was different than the one they played professionally, it threw me. I, I It just gave me a little like irk in my stomach. And I was only like 12 years old, but it just kind of went like, why aren't you playing the sport that you love? I understand getting paid to do the thing you're the, you're the best at, but I mean, shouldn't you love the thing that you're good at? Or isn't that why you do the thing you're uh, like that you're good at? Because, because you love it. And it, it's to me, it's, it's that, that love is, I think what keeps the highs and lows of this industry um, from being too low and from, you know, from making the things that are medium feel like highs because I'm excited about all the little things that this industry has to offer. I'm excited about the audition that I'll never hear back from, but for a a movie that is created by an actor that I've loved since I was a kid. And, and I'll, I'll always come out of that going like this, did you know what I got to do? And like, Oh, so did you book that movie? I was like, no, I got to audition for it. It, it makes me happy. And I think there's ways to get jaded when your job is so in the public eye, whether it's sports, whether it's uh, media, whether it's acting. And I just really hope that I never become that. I'm always going to be really happy with what I get to do. It's not what I have to do. It's what I get to do. And I believe it's going to continue to be like that for you, to be quite honest. And only the reason why is when we consider and look at very strongly, you know, your accolades and what you've accomplished and with meeting Mr. Christmas and playing Dr. Finn Miller and the recognition and response that we know is going to do very, very well, um, you know, in general, uh, it's it's extraordinary. And I just want you to know that you are appreciated. Um, and I want to thank you for taking time to know how important you know this this movie is working with your other you know co-stars and and people that are in the film um you know including uh you know uh greta is uh, was it greta johns but it's Karu greta, greta Karu johns, johns yeah yeah and you know it's extraordinary to know once again a great movie and I've got want to recap once again we've got Madison Smith we're talking about meeting Mr. Christmas premieres tomorrow on chicken soup for the soul right not of the soul it's for the soul for the soul yeah for the soul um and if th- this is what the film is about a popular travel blogger's negative impressions about christmas are challenged when she must team up with the holiday loving town doctor in order to save her family's annual christmas event i am excited to see this i hope that not only um does it air on chicken soup for the soul but it also has the ability to go elsewhere i know the production company was photo star entertainment um and distributor was prank films uh so it is very exciting to know meeting mr christmas is going to be the first film more than about Christmas and Christmas spirit, it really is about relationships and communication and everyday life or, you know, people in our, in our world um, that are looking for ways to see life through their eyes and what it means to them through their own truth and perception. So congratulations. Thank you so much. It's, it's, it's a, it's a real, like it, it, it's just a, a real good time to be a part of uh, something special like that. We're going to play the trailer right now. Are you excited? I'm let's, let's go. <laughs> Here we go. Meeting Mr. Christmas. We're going to play the official trailer starring Madison Smith. Going home for Christmas. You haven't done that in four years. So maybe it'll be good for you to be at home for a little bit. Except that running away from Christmas is a massive part of my brand. It's just a few nights. You can I can't believe my eyes. Is that the Sophie from Sophie Solo Travels? Just helping my mom with her family charity event. Oh my, I am so sorry. Mom, you'll never guess. I went to Sam's and this absolute doofus of a man just ran right into me. And it was you. 
You and Dr. Miller will be working together in organizing the charity gala for the hospital. Well, I'm off my feet. Should I be worried? Uh, no, it's this uh, new angle I thought I would try. There's this one subject, a uh, Mr. Christmas, if you will. It's too much. I think people are just gonna eat it up. So you're saying you're ready to finally start working together on this thing? Well, it would appear that that is what I'm saying, yes. Deal. You know, I always said I would write with integrity and tell the truth, and this just doesn't feel like the truth anymore. Escaping Mr. Christmas. I guess I was just material for your article. I've made a huge mistake, and I know what to do. Every person has their own journey, and you're on yours. There's something I need your help with. I'm gonna stop running away from people who care about me. Sophie, wherever you are, that's where I want to be. That is totally not your traditional kind of Christmas film. So I really hope people understand that this is so much more than that. And I'm really excited. Like I, I like I said, I got to work with Greta, but like one of the other voices you would have heard, his name is Jamie Calica, and he was a good friend of mine for a very long time, early in my career. And uh, it was really cool. He got to he gets to play my best friend in the show, and he's the first in my sort of sounding board who I uh, I get to tell all my problems to. And oh man, if you ever get a chance to be friends on screen with the person you're friends with in real life, it is the most fun. We were just absolute idiots on set, but we got some really fun scenes out of the way as well. Which you know, <laughs> I feel like you can only be an idiot if you can do a good job at the same time. And uh, I think we told that line pretty well. Um, it just ended up being so much fun. And like I said earlier, I got to do this in my hometown. And it was something very special for me to get to do there. I told every person who would listen how proud I was about doing it. Um, it was really cool. Like there's um, a few moments in the, in the actual end of in the film but where I just would do group photos with everybody who was um, like background and extras on our show, almost everybody that did it, uh, did it as a volunteer. So there were hometown people who wanted to be a part of a Christmas movie, feel in the Christmas spirit. And anytime they did, I, I would wait after I would take photos with anybody who wanted to, I would try and take a group photo with the whole group of volunteers. And I have some on my Instagram. It, it made it even more special because of, how the, the town came together, funny enough, just like in our movie, to, to make something special for, for what we hope is the whole world. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, once again, Meeting Mr. Christmas premieres November 1st on Chicken Soup for the Soul. And I'm excited for you. And you look so Thank good so in this much. film, and I can see why <laughs> you can play a 22-year-old as well. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm 10 years that senior. So it's, uh, it's always nice to, you know, I guess put on that, uh, nightly skincare routine as, uh, <laughs> once every one, anytime I remember once every seven weeks or something like that, it, I guess it's working. It is. It totally is. You really <laughs> do. You, you not only look like a doctor, you were made perfectly for this film. Once again, meeting Mr. Christmas premieres November 1st on chicken soup for the soul Anything else you want to share, Madison, before we head out for the day? Well, I, I, uh, I was excited that I just got to be a part of another project, which is coming up pretty soon. It's called Dating Wisdom, which I'm excited for uh, people to see. E is doing this new round of uh, rom-coms that are you know, a little bit, I'd say, uh, on the edgier version of things. And I, I'm really excited for people to see that. I just came out of a movie called uh, Nikki and Nora's Sister Sleuths, but... Right now, me and Mr. Christmas is coming up, and I hope everybody really enjoys it. We've got to have you back on. Any projects, anything you want to talk about, seriously, you've got my direct contact, Madison. Let's have you on more often and not. Get prepared, and we can go ahead and do like we're doing today. And it was not even planned. It, once again, it was unexpected that it ended up cor correlating um, and coordinating perfectly for you uh, that mm -hmm. we're doing this interview a day before your movie premiere. I know that was the hilarious part. You're like, do you have anything uh, anything you want to talk about? And I was like, 
I mean, I do have a movie that comes out the next day. Do we want to talk about that? <laughs> I feel like I should have been better at this. Maybe I should have been like, well, yes, I'd like to talk about meeting Mr. Christmas. But I kind of went, um, well, what about the one that's uh, 24 hours later? Exactly. And, uh, yeah, so... I should be better. I'll be better in the future. I promise. I'll do a better job. No, I love how it rolled once again. And I'm going to put it on record. I am number one when it comes to unscripted radio interviews. I mean, every major network knows and that I do not pre-plan anything. We may have an understanding or a base or an idea of what the interview could be like, but I don't ever send pre-planned questions. I just don't do it. And from Netflix to HBO Max to Hulu to NBC, ABC, they all know I do not pre-plan anything. So I'm going to, once again, put it on record. You can go ahead and mm -hmm. challenge me. I'm an Italian Sicilian from New Jersey. I don't mind, but I am the first real unscripted radio show in the industry that's owned and operated by a public relations representative. Cheers to that. I love it. I love to hear it. I don't normally put drops into things. I'm going to be very transparent with you. Anyone who knows me, and, and I like to keep the spotlight on you. When I feel as I do with you, Madison, I have permission to share and highlight about myself because I'm, I'm not really into a lot of this. Um, when it comes to self-promotion, um, I love mm -hmm. doing it for all of you guys and being there as a support network. But as you know, and we talked about before coming on, I'm also talent. And I cast mm -hmm. for like about 20 shows, scripted, unscripted last year. I did 17 this year. Like I've accomplished everything I've wanted to in life. The only thing I have not acquired or accomplished that I want is... I don't know if you want to call it an actor or what. I don't see it as an actor, but I want to be a a talent, somebody that has personality, someone that's a human being that I would mm -hmm. like to express my inner skills and my inner passions like you do. And I want to do and channel that through television and film. Absolutely. And I think like even touching back, like I think I'm, if I take myself out of this equation and become an audience member, you would be who people hear more often than anybody else. You're the, the person that they're tuning in to hear. So peeking behind that curtain every once in a while is absolutely what everybody listening wants. It's not just about interviewing the guy that they've never heard of before. I mean, hopefully one or two people listening have heard of Madison Smith, but if you never heard of me, you're tuning in because you love Steven. And the fact is, is we always want to hear about the person that we're being interviewed. It makes it like a conversation rather than an interview. It makes it feel like I'm talking to somebody that I want to talk with. It's not a chore. It's this is me and you talking. And if we start touching on the movie that I have coming out, great. But more than anything, I got to have a good time. I didn't fall asleep doing it because I was, <laughs> you know, just repeating back my uh, my talking points over and over. It's, it's something that we got to have a, a chat about. And here's what I'm going to do. And I'm being very, very transparent when I say this. Um, what I am doing now is I'm not calling in any favors. I, I don't need to do that. I don't want to do it. Whatever is going to happen in my best interest is going to happen, just like which I believe you as well. I feel like we share a lot um, of similar things and viewpoints uh, when it comes to life. What I will like to um, say to you, Madison is mm -hmm. I'm planting a seed with you that since you know my position, you know what I look like. We're connected on socials. We're even more connected now. I feel part of your family is anyone who could definitely utilize someone of my skill set and talent and also personality in a world world of film or TV. Plug me in. Let I'll, I'll cast, Absolutely. I'll come in, I'll fly to LA, I don't care, I will go whatever. I will follow the chain of command, I'll come to the studio, I'll read, I know that a lot of stuff. And share this with me, um, if you're able to. Did you read or do the casting or, or cast through Zoom or, um, or any of those video platforms? Because I know television is doing that a lot now. Like people are not going in studios right now. Everything's being done through video voice call or whatever. It's all, everything right now, audition wise, is self taped. So 
to a point you can live anywhere in the world as long as you have access to a good reader. Anyone in the world can become an actor. Sometimes it may、uh, hinder you because they want to pay、uh, locals.、Mm-hmm. So say something is filming in Vancouver and you live in、uh, you live in Seattle and you want to film something there. If they if like there's chances that anybody living anywhere can book those things, but there's a good chance that they want to pay for a local. So you could always just pay for yourself to stay there and be in a show. To a point, you'll kind of come out zero. You'll get paid for it, but you'll have to pay to do it. But that's the way things start. That's actually funny enough. The way that my career started, I went and、uh, did one day on a Lifetime movie called、um, "A Mother's Nightmare," starring Grant Gustin and Jessica Lounds. I was the photo at the very beginning of the movie because it's technically my character's funeral. And then I'm in like a,、uh, a flashback later in the show, and they were casting somebody local out of Kelowna, and I was living in Vancouver at the time. I got cast. They were only going to pay me as a Kelowna local, so I had to drive myself there, put myself up. I think I lost money in the process, but the very next month, because I had booked one thing, I booked my next role, and I booked my next role after that, and it it all starts to snowball. So it's. The acting industry is really interesting. It's basically that place that if you invest in yourself, you do get the payoff. And everybody who wants to become an actor or start being an actor, I always like to say, it's just like starting a small business. I mean, you are your small business, and they say a small business doesn't make a profit for five years. And you should always think about that. It could be longer as a、um, as an actor. I mean, there are people who were. You know, grinding for a really long time. Think about John Hamm before Mad Men, a guy grinding that now is a household name, but for 20 years was you know trying to trying to make it work. Now he's a person who is like in every conversation in Top Gun with Tom Cruise. Like it's it's a thing that takes a long time to pay off, but if you don't quit and you keep putting the work in and trying to get better and better, it is something that can pay off for anybody who wants to do it. The industry is open to everyone, which is the coolest part about being a part of it. That is the best advice I have heard most recently from anyone, and I want to thank you for that. Thank you for definitely elevating the experience of of what a person who is very passionate, like yourself, Madison, of wanting to be in this industry, which I can relate to very much. And honestly, what this interview has done and served me today.、Um, <clears throat> Being though that I'm in a very good transition right now is, it is sparked to where I feel and what I'm hearing with you and where you really are once again a, a, an angel, a, a messenger, is <laughs> it really is about self, and I feel even more inspired、um, having this conversation with you, being you know forthcoming and and very、uh, open and and feeling very comfortable with you.、Um, thank you. For absolutely re- for reminding me how much more that I can do than what I have been doing because I I don't、uh, I, I've done a lot but your message tells me you know I can do more、uh, those possibilities are out there they can turn into reality and then look at you to where you've acquired what you've acquired and I'm. I'm extremely excited for you,、um, for what I've watched with the trailer of meeting Mr. Christmas. It just it just reminds me of when I was a kid of why I fell in love with this industry in with this career. Absolutely, yeah. I'm and I'm glad to hear that because it. I always think everybody, everyone out there, should pursue their dream in some way. And by the way, that's for anybody listening. I think. Whatever your dream is, dreams don't have to be the same for everybody. My dream is to play pretend and and be paid to do it. That that's my dream. But some people's dream is to, you know, it's it's funny. Like I said, I said this recently. It's a weird thing, but there are some people that are motivated by money, and that is a great dream to have. If you whatever gets you out of bed in the morning, like my dad is a salesman, and that's what he does, and. He gets pumped about making a sale. I I get that piece of of him in me as well, and 
And whatever your dream is, whatever makes you happy, just go after it. Enjoy it. If you're working for the weekend so you can have a, a cabin and a boat, then again, that's a dream that you're going towards. No, don't let anybody else's dream dictate yours. Whatever you want, have it. It's a, another weird little tangent, but uh, I got married a year ago and I read a thing that was like, make your wedding the wedding you want to have, not the wedding that you're supposed to have. And it's the same thing for your dreams. Like make your dream what you want to do and pursue it. Now, there are some dreams that are tough. Like if you want to be a professional swimmer, well, there are people that are built to be swimmers and it's a little more difficult, but there's nothing to say that you can't attack it and try and do it. I mean, that's, it's the best thing about the world that we're in is there's so much opportunity for chasing your dream and enjoy, enjoy the pursuit because if you're trying to do something you want to do, you'll never regret it. I appreciate that. Thank you again. Seriously, Madison Smith, everyone tune in to his premiere new film meeting Mr. Christmas on chicken soup for the soul. Uh, check your local listings, you know, check, Anywhere and everywhere, uh, because this can eventually, you know, could it go on video on demand? I mean, people are still using Redbox. I mean, could it? I go believe it goes on demand in December. If I'm not mistaken, I saw that you can rent it on demand in December. It's on streaming, I think, to give it uh, the most audience on streaming first. Mm -hmm. But then I believe come, to, come December, I think it was December 8th, it'll be available to rent on demand, I believe. Spectacular. Just what I thought. So once again, meeting Mr. Christmas, a popular travel bloggers, negative impressions about Christmas or challenge when she must team up with the holiday loving town doctor in order to save her family's annual Christmas event starring Mr. Madison Smith, who is Mr. Christmas. Once again, <laughs> premieres November 1st. Thank you again for today, Madison. And who would you like to give a shout out to? Let's give a shout out to the city of Prince George. Uh, let's give a shout out to everybody that was there to, uh, to, you know, help me grow up. And then also there when I came back to film a movie, let's go. Uh, the city of Prince George is absolutely who I want to send a shout out to. I appreciate it again, Madison. And once again, go to Madison's Instagram, Madison Smith, 21, M A D O S Smith, 21. Super excited. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you for the message. Thank you for um, really lifting my soul and my spirit and having done something great for me today because I'm really feeling the, um, the the inspiration and passion. It, it, this moved me. Thank you. I can't wait. And I hope I'm one of the first calls when you book your first job. <laughs> you better believe it. Um, so Madison, just stay in the line. We're going to do a, a quick closeout. Uh, Marcos did reply back and said, and, uh, I want to get to that message. He's a sweetheart. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. Thanks again, everyone for tuning in today. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco on power 98.5. You are always home when you come and join in with us, uh, of exclusive interviews, uh, events, topics, and more. Power985.com. Download the iOS or Android app. Tune in on Alexa. We stream live on Streamer, uh, Streama, MyTuner, Live FM Radio, and more. 200 countries and counting. The first and only unscripted reality radio show in the business Hosted, produced, and owned by an award-winning public relations representative, and that is me, Mr. Stephen Cuoco. You can find out more, more about me and my agency by going to unitedangelsdream.com. Once again, unitedangelsdream.com. I do more than what most people may think when it comes to public relations. Public relations is not about media placement. We don't live in a world back when it was much easier where we were able to have media companies who really valued true stories and real people doing great things in a world uh, that's beyond fluff media and sensationalism. 
Uh, so once again, you want great counsel, great advice, contract negotiations, and more, you can reach out to me anytime by going to stevencuoco.com, S-T-E-V-E-N-C-U-O-C-O.com. Truly appreciate Madison. I'm even more inspired ever more. I know I will be in a production sometime uh, within 2023. I don't know yet. Madison will be at the top of my list for that phone call. I know Marcos is going to really be excited to uh, do an interview on that uh, for Digital Journal. Uh, once again, for everyone and anyone, this is your life. This is your career. It's your inspiration. It's your passions. Make sure that when you're building out your team, whether it's an agency, an agent, a management company, public relations firm, or whatever it may be, or even yourself, the highest value and integrity must be encompassed in all that you do, transparency, communication, and also due diligence of um, holding accountability, not only to yourself, but also to your team and the people that you're working with so that everything is within uh, a streamlined fashion. And uh, once again, I can stress it enough. Communication, communication, communication. Always be included. Once again, Power 98.5 Satellite Radio, Power985.com, and more, StephenCuoco.com, S-T-E-V-E-N-C-U-O-C-O.com. Have a great and safe holiday. I'm so glad I woke up today. My house and... And my property was not vandalized. I'm, I'm wondering if, um, you know, Mischief Night does not exist anymore. I haven't seen or known if Mischief Night exists since the 90s. So um, I'm sure people are toilet paper, you know, or, you know, people's houses and tic-tacking or whatever of how we used to call it or pumpkin smashing still. I know I saw a video on TikTok. A couple kids smashed some pumpkins. Guy uh, got it on his uh what ring doorbell video went over next door and uh, got to watch the the three kids be made to come back and clean up all that sticky, ooey, gooey pumpkin mess. So um, be mindful. It's not like back in the day when we grew up. Someone's got a video camera somewhere. So even if you're thinking about smashing pumpkins, if not last night or if you did it last night and thinking about tonight, don't think you're going to get away with it that easily. Cameras are always around. Either way, live good, feel good, and always do what's right. And make someone else's life even more happier than how you met them. Have a great day, everyone. Friend us on your socials and let's connect.